Welcome back everybody, this is Red Skull back at it again with another Chivalry 2 guide. This time we'll attach some wings and look at all the objective maps Chivalry 2 has to offer and give some explanations about objectives and ways to play 2Ds and therefore win more. Before we begin, I'll have to give you guys a huge thank you for all the views and likes and subs and comments on the last guide I made concerning combat. For everyone that hasn't seen it yet, I'll link it in the top right corner for anyone having questions about combat, counters, reposts, etc. The insane amount of views and feedback on the guide really overwhelmed me and I'm so happy you guys liked the work I put in there. We passed 100 subs by now and that is actually so awesome. Alright, no more bootlicking, let's get clapping once again. I'll show you some bird's eye footage of every objective map there is right now and explain the different objectives as well as give some useful tips and tricks to prepare and succeed in your attacks or defenses. I'll start out with one I've seen many people have problems with since release and that kind of baffled me actually because it's on a very different part of the map that I thought people might have problems with. I even had problems recording a round that goes all the way because most of the games I get thrown in end super early here. It is the Siege of Rothelm. So, when first you start the Siege of Rothelm, you'll be thrown onto this huge AF open field. The objective here is to either push the siege towers to the wall or stop the siege towers from reaching the wall. Playing the objective is actually pretty simple here. Stand close or inside one of the two towers to be counted. If the red team has more people than the blue team, the tower will stop. If the blue team, so the attacking team, has more people than the red team, the tower will go. Only one of the towers needs to reach the keep for the objective to succeed. The other one will automatically follow after if it got left behind in the pushing process. Be aware that when you push one of the towers far ahead of the other and get forced to switch because for example you get overwhelmed by a lot of bad boys, your progress bar will only start to fill up more once the behind one passes the tower that is further ahead. I highly suggest going up the tower. People often hide up there or forget to check it completely, otherwise there is not too much to say here except avoid fighting in the field and try to get to the towers as quickly as possible. You can throw firebombs into the towers or try to put barricades and spikes and bear traps in front of the tower to hinder the defending team a bit in its ability to enter the tower. For the defending team I suggest using your spike traps on the walls of the castle where the towers will land eventually so the attackers can't instantly storm off the thing and start getting ground on the wall. You can also save your firebombs for the moment the tower opens up and get huge amount of kills and damage if there's a lot of people in the tower. As attacker try not to throw your firebombs on the tower itself. This will make the space you have when leaving it even smaller and make your team very easy to be multi-killed by heavy attacks and other firebombs. The next stage is taking or defending the guardhouse to the city's gates. You can only make progress on this objective if you have more people in between these two flags than the enemy team. As said before, defenders try using your barricades to block the siege tower exit, block the doorways with bear and spike traps and all around make the attackers have less space to work with. Getting up the stairs is also pretty good here, since you can ambush people fighting downstairs or get free overheads on people coming up. Defenders should split up the team pretty evenly to both sides to be able to deal with pushes from both sides, so be aware of your surroundings. As attackers, you have to get in there. I've seen countless rounds failing on this stage now, just because the attackers only stayed outside on the walls and didn't make any progress, even though there were very few defending people left inside the building. Don't be afraid to communicate this to your team if they don't seem to notice. If the red boys are too strong to push through on the wall, you can try flanking by going down to ground level and coming up the stairs, but don't get bound into fighting downstairs. That will only lead to your demise since the defenders will just respawn around you. If you got a group of people you play with, you can try holding the staircase to not let respawning people people back up, but keep an eye out for your back when doing this. Once you conquered and held the gatehouse for a small while, you get to the next stage, burn the tents. There are two places you can get torches from, you can see them on screen right now, as well as the tents actually. The defenders should try to get around these as fast as possible, since the spread out nature of the tents makes themselves hard to defend individually once there are multiple torchbearers present. Place traps and stuff around the fires and try to focus the torchbearers if anyone gets to get one. As an attacker, just get a torch and go, go, go! Completing this stage is fast is very good. 
and you need the time for the next stages. Don't bother fighting with a torch, just block, maybe counter once, then dash away and start running towards your goal, the tents. You can jump and throw to get more range on your throws. Overall, I suggest just running for it once you get a torch or try and defend the present torch bearer from any attackers. People will often tunnel the torch bearers super hard and you can get big damage in or even kill them before they even wreck. Overall, this is pretty hard to defend, but making good time on this defense can ease up the later stages quite a bit. Alright, the following stage is to either push the siege ramps rolling into the castle of Rathelm or again stop them from reaching their destination. The city is very spread out with a lot of nooks and crannies and alleyways around and you can find lots of fun throwables and fighting weapons around town. So if you wanna have some fun, just go snooping around a bit. For wanting to win? However, I suggest sticking to your siege ramps and maybe try and place some traps or barricades in the alleyways around. If you sense there's too many people around the thing, you can try to switch to the other one, but I do not recommend this. Most of the time you will get bound in one of the countless alleys and before you reach your destination, the people around the one you left will have scattered off as well thinking the same as you. Remember using overheads and stabs in crowd fights and don't just blindly slash your whole team in half. If it's really crowded around the thing, just stick to securing flanks and keep on the lookout for enemies running in from behind or the sides. For the attacking team pushing the left siege ramp, there's this ballista that can be devastating if operated by a capable enemy player, so you should try to get control of the thing early. I don't think it's of much use to the attacking team, since it doesn't have too much view on the road ahead and most enemies will come in from the sides anyways. Most of the time you just get farmed of it when trying to operate it as an attacker. You can destroy it after pushing the operator off to make the next guy come in lose more time before he can use it again. Be cautious around the bridges. These are very tight areas and a single firebomb can cover the whole way through on one side when your siege ramp stands under it. These are good places for defenders to lie in wait and again get some good firebombs, traps and barricades off and therefore halt the push there. Since people will be crowded in these choke points and be prone to hit each other and be afraid of going forward. You can jump over the firebomb's ground effect if the space in front of it is clear by the way. Another good point to defend even though really close to the end of the stage is the town square with the big dead tree. You can control both towers there for a short amount of time and archers have a good field of view here to get some nasty shots in and again take these precious seconds off the timer. Once the ramps reach the castle wall off we go to the second to last stage of the map. Don't go onto the ramp too early or you will fall off into the dig around the castle. Wait for the ramp to extend before hopping onto it. The first point of interest the attacking team should really try to get their hands on is once again the ballista. When you turn it around 180 degrees you can cover the whole courtyard with bolts and even shoot the archers trying to be sneaky in the castle's windows. Try focusing these archers at first because you will be an easy target for them as well. The courtyard can only be taken as long as the attack attacking team has more people in the circle around the gallows or on the gallows itself. Once again, defenders put down your spikes and barricades and whatnot around this point to make it harder for the enemy to reach in. Even if it's just one or two seconds, many people still don't bother destroying these things and try to jump or walk around them. For defenders, this is a good time to use firebombs once more. Cover the entrances to the circle or the gallows itself in flame. Try not to cut off your own way in though. For attackers, save your firebombs here. I repeat, do not use your firebombs on the courtyard stage. You will need them if the enemy is somewhat competent. This leads us to the last objective of the siege of Ruthelm. The attackers have to kill the mason's heir to the throne. The defenders must protect him. For anyone not in the know here, the player controlling the mason heir will always be the player on top of the leaderboard and has to accept playing the guy by pressing K. If he refuses the right to play the heir, it goes down to second place and so on and so forth. Defenders can barricade and spike up the castle entrances once more. Attackers should try to get into the castle as fast as possible and with as big numbers as possible. As soon as the last stage ends, rush to the castle and get in. Do not let the defenders form the meatball. Attacking archers should try to tunnel the air and not waste any shots on people fighting in the blob. Try to hit the important target as often as you can. Now I'll have to switch to defender side as knowledge about this is needed to understand the further attacking tips or the lack of it actually. For the air, do not run in and fight. 
You are the important one and everyone else is just a meat shield for you. They are there to give their lives for you and as the most important person in the realm you need to survive this onslaught. You should get up the stairs and into one of the corners as fast as possible. Probably even crouch down like the cowardly noble you are and tell your team to meatball around you as hard as they can. As not king, do just this. Hug your king, put the healing banners down, barricade the stairways and the tight corridor leading into the corner and fight off the attackers in line with your team. Don't rush in and get killed, just hold the line. With some healing banners, horns and barricades up, this way of defense is nearly unpenetrable and super hard to deal with as the attacking team. The only thing you can try doing as attacker once the meat ball is formed is try and use the hopefully saved up firebombs properly. This means throwing them as far into the corner as you can to try and flood the cowardly rats out of their hiding spot. Try to go in with your teammates. Remember overheads and stabs. Trying to rush in solo most of the time does only get you killed. Will maybe even get off one or two attacks on the prince guy. But with proper use of healing tools he will soon be back to full. Jumping throws can be used here once again to gain a bit of range for your firebombs. But this is actually all I can say to you attacking guys. Once the meatball is properly formed it's very hard to fight it and get through since the air will stand exactly in the spot the reinforcements will spawn from. So the best tip really is to not let it be formed in the first place. If the timer is down to zero and you're not subbed to the channel or the prince is slain and you still aren't, the siege of Rotheim ends. And therefore today's video does as well. I hope you guys could learn something for your future rounds on Rotheim and maybe gain some better awareness of your surroundings and points to focus on during the rounds. Thank you all for watching. As always, I have been Red Skull. You guys have been awesome. See you in the next video.